Thank you that we have a place to worship you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that we are alive and well today. Thank you that we woke up today. We're breathing today. I thank you that, that you've healed us of all of our sicknesses, Father God. I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that we just leave here refreshed and we leave here leaving with a new, with a new uh, vision, with a new purpose, Father God, and I thank you that the Holy Spirit just comes down and touches each and every one of us today, fills us with the Holy Ghost, and touches us with his tangible presence, Father God, and I thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. Who knows that my Redeemer lives? Amen. My Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Greater. 
Thank you, God. You know, we're here. We woke up this morning. We got to church, and, and uh, we're, we're in good health, each and every one of us. We're doing good. Hallelujah. And that's because he lives. Amen. And that's because of who he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of who he is, we can overcome anything, any situation that we are facing. Anything that we are currently facing, anything that we have faced in the past cannot return because of who he is. Amen. Hallelujah. And because of who you are, I give you glory.
God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hands. Let's just give the Lord some praise. Let's just give the Lord our worship. Glory to God. There's only one worthy but him. There's only one righteous but him. The righteous one, Jesus. Glory to God. And we're so thankful, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Let the fruit of our lips bless you. Let the fruit of our lips bless you and praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is a good time. Glory to God. To lift up his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. 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 I will bless the Lord. I, me, me, me. Point to yourself. Say me, me, me. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will give you my praise. I will lift up my voice and say thank you and praise God. Hallelujah. Me, 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 me. Not my neighbor. Me. I will lift up his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I will praise you with my own mouth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The mouth you gave me. With the wind in, my, in the lungs you gave me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You gave this to me and I'm going to give it back to you in my praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Me. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I don't care what they said. Hallelujah. I will bless you. I will praise you. I will lift up my hands. Hallelujah. I'm lifting up my hands because you gave me these hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You gave me the strength to stand up this morning. You put wind in my lungs this morning. You caused the blood to flow warm through my veins this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have so much to be thankful for this morning. Glory to God. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't praise you enough, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 There's none holy but you, Lord. There's none righteous but you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. And I will lift up your name. I will bless you in the sanctuary. Glory to God. Me, me, me. Yes, me, I will do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can't speak for my neighbor, but me, 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 I'm going to lift up my hands. Praise God. I'm going to praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what nobody else is doing, Lord, because I'm going to praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's worthy, church. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Don't you give more praise than you gave to, at the football game. Don't, don't give your praise away to Oprah and Dr. Phil. Hallelujah. They might be pretty good folks, but they don't compare. They don't compare to the, the, the true and righteous one. The living God, amen. The living, the only true and wise God. Hallelujah. 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 I know you want me to move on, but I ain't going to move on yet. Because the Lord is wanting something. The Lord is wanting your praise. Hallelujah. The Lord is wanting your praise. Hallelujah. The Lord is wanting your, I don't want your praise. The Lord is wanting your praise. The Lord is wanting your praise. Hallelujah. 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 Don't sit there like a stuffed suit. Give him some of your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It was him that started you on your way this morning. Hallelujah. The alarm clock didn't start you. He started you. 
Hallelujah. You got here safely because he protected you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not here because you were such a good driver. You had angels watching over you, keeping you safe getting here. And now you want to sit there like, mm, I wish you would hurry up, move on. You better praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You better unfold your arms and lift them up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, I will. 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 I will praise you, Lord. I will magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Glory to God. <laughs> yes, I will. I'll be doggone if I let the devil make me sit down on you. Hallelujah. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I will lift up my hands. Hallelujah. I will shout with my loudest voice. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to shout so loud that the devil gets shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I practice hollering all the time so I can come in here and holler. Woo! Hallelujah. I holler at home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel my help coming on. <laughs> That's that old saying they say. I feel my help coming on. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know, I know some of y'all wanted me to be dignified this morning. <laughs> but I'm sorry. <laughs> Lord got another plan. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to have to lay my dignity aside for a little while. Hallelujah. And I'm going to have to dance like David danced. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the sight? Hallelujah. What a spectacle David made of himself. Glory to God. But you know what? God was pleased. God was pleased. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. He wasn't pleased with his fine robes and linen. Glory to God. He wasn't pleased with the jewelry. He wasn't pleased with the trumpet blowing and playing. Glory to God. He was pleased when David danced. He was pleased when David danced before him with all his might. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your healing and your breakthrough is in, in your dance sometimes. Hallelujah. You, get, you, you got high blood pressure, hypertension. You got stuff going on. You ain't danced for David in a long time. Go and dance like David in a long time. Hallelujah. Maybe you need to practice some dancing, glory to God, in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. That stuff will shake off you in the presence of the Lord. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know, I ain't started preaching yet. Hallelujah. I'm just warming up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're praying for hope. We've been praying for Holy Ghost fire in this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just drop in here like warm honey. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you ever, if you had some warm honey or, uh, uh, you know, something warm roll down on you, glory to God, you don't really know it's there for a minute. And then all of a sudden you feel it. You're like, what, 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 what is this? What is this? 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let him get all over you this morning. Let him get all over you this morning. We've been praying for the Holy Ghost, for a manifestation of the Holy Ghost in this place, for the bright wind of the Spirit to blow through this place. Amen. And I want you to be in agreement that it's continued to stir and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir. And And you will leave here differently than the way you came in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Y'all going to get me started. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Praise God, if you can. Be seated in the presence of the Lord, if you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I guess at this time, I'm going to welcome you to Faith and Victory Church. You are so welcome. Amen. We are so glad that you are here. God's got a special blessing for you today. Amen. Say, raise your hand. Say, that's me. Hallelujah. God's got a special blessing for you today because you are here. You could have been at home in the bed. You could have been out at the golf course. You could have been out, you know, shopping at the mall. You could have been doing a, a myriad of different things. But you are here to get the word of God. And you will not be disappointed. Not because of me, but because of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he has never disappointed. Hallelujah. He never leaves you feeling, "Ah, I wish I could have got a little bit more. No, no. He always, he's, he's always, always to the fill, to the, to the flow and overflow. Glory to God. He said, my cup runneth over. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Here we serve a God of more than enough. Glory to God. He going to give you so much that you can't hold it all. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope you brought you a bib because you might spit up a little bit. Hallelujah, because he's going to fill you up this morning. Hallelujah, praise God. Praise God. Well, if you are a first-time visitor here at Faith and Victory Church, please stand so we can give you a great welcome. Amen. If this is your first time here, if you would be so kind of... Sister Yvette, amen. Good friend of my wife and I, glory to God, Sister Yvette. Praise God, this is her first time coming and being with us today. Thank you for welcoming her to, uh uh-huh, I know, but it's okay, we don't believe in, in, we don't want to embarrass nobody, you know, if you don't want to stand, you don't have to stand, it's okay, we welcome you in Jesus' name anyway, amen, glory to God, and see, a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, we, we give you an opportunity to exercise, we, we always are given opportunities to exercise your faith, you know, so even, even when you're not feeling really well sometimes, you know, and, you know, and, and, and the pastor say, everybody stand up and shout. Well, well, if you believe in God that you are healed and you come into place to be healed and healing is here. And I, re- I tell you now, healing is here. Glory to God. Healing is in the house. And if, it, and if the word come forth, stand up and shout. You better jump on that. Glory to God. He said, I ain't stood up and jumped in 10 years. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to do it today in Jesus' name. Hey, hallelujah. Jump on that by faith. Glory to God. You know, in the the Bible, you know, always talks about people being healed. You know, it's as they as they responded to the word. Glory to God. You get your breakthrough. You get your miracle. You get that thing you believe in God by responding to the preached word, to the logos, the written word, and an inspired word. Glory to God. We believe in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit around here. Amen. We're not the church of the frozen children. Amen. We believe in signs, wonders, and miracles being wrought in our midst. Amen. We expect it on every occasion that we come together. Amen. If something miraculous ain't happening, man, we need to get in that word. Lord, why is something? Lord, we need your, we need you moving in this place. Glory to God. Because see, that's the, that's the, that's the ringing bell. That's the, that's the dinner bell for the world. Glory to God. Because when they see signs, wonders, and miracles, they want to say, what in the world is going on over there? Man, Brother Daryl, he was, he was crippled as he could be. He come, I seen him the other day. He said he went down to that church on, on by the, around by the river. And man, I tell you what, he is just skipping and hopping and jumping. I need to go over there and see what they're doing over there. Yes. Amen. Because 
I got some things going on in my life too. I need to, I need to get some answers for. Amen. Amen. And that's what the church ought to be. Amen. That's what the church ought to be. Amen. So once again, we want to welcome you to Faith and Victory Church. We are so glad you are here. You did not get here by mistake or accident. And even if you think you got here by mistake or accident, it wasn't by mistake or accident. It was divine purpose that got you here. Amen. God wanted you to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, uh, oh, just a quick, uh, couple quick announcements. We have our... Uh, our <clears throat> We have our fifth Sunday fellowship next Sunday, and then of course on Saturday we have our Bible um, um, bi vacation Bible school. Thank you so much. We have our vacation Bible school, which is going to take place on the twenty eighth uh, from it's ten to four. Is that right? Is that right, Jesse? Ten to four. There we go. See, there it is, right there. See? I, ain't, I I just cooked up in the spirit. I didn't even see that. I didn't even know that was there. But <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Ten to four next Saturday. Praise God. Kids are going to have a great time in the Lord. They're going to learn about Jesus, glory to God, and fellowship, and have some good fun and food. And amen. They're going to have a good time. Amen. amen. That's going to be right here over in the uh, adjacent room over there all day. Amen. And they're going to have a great time. Praise God. And, uh, and like I forestated, uh, our fifth Sunday fellowship is going to be uh, at, the, at the Gibson Park. Uh, it's right there off of Wendover, um, right off Premier. This, not Premier. What's the name of that street? Um, <clears throat> but it's on Wendover. Uh, you can Google it. Okay. I, I, ain't gonna, I don't need to think that. I don't need to think that hard. Google it. Amen. Gibson Park off Wendover. You get there. Amen. If you don't, if you still don't get it, call me. You can follow me over there. Amen. I'm gonna be there. We're gonna have good food, good fellowship, good fun, good time. Amen. And we also have our sign-up sheets in the back on the, on the table back. <clears throat> uh, at, in the foyer. Please sign up to bring something. Amen. Sign up to bring something good. Don't, don't, don't just pick up the fastest bag of cookies you can pick up, you know. Put some thought into it. Amen. 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 We're going we're gonna to have a good time with some good food. Amen. Amen. You know, I ain't saying nothing wrong with food, line, cookies. But, you know, this is, this is, for, your free, this is for your family. Amen. Amen. You, 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 don't bring, you don't bring your old stale stuff to the, to the family house, you know. You bring your good stuff. Amen. You don't want, you don't want Aunt, Aunt Mary saying, oh, Lord, you know they just brought that old store-bought stuff in here? No, no, you don't want to do that. You know your family talk about you now. Well, we won't talk about you. we just pray for you. Amen. <laughs> and right now, I'm praying that you bring something good. Amen. And so sign up on the sheet so we'll know that you're bringing something good. Amen. Praise God. At this time, we're going to receive our, this morning's tithes and offerings. If you would like an offering envelope, our, our handsome gentleman here, Brother Benny and uh, Brother Joe have offering envelopes if you want to give by cash. If you want to do by electronic means, uh, you can log on to PayPal at donations at fbc.org. And you can also do square cash. Uh, do we have that information for the square cash? <clears throat> if you want to do it by square cash as well, um, we do have that information that we can get to if you wanted to give by square cash. Um, and, of course, <clears throat> giving is biblical. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosoms. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so remember the tithe is 10, ten cents out of a dollar. Don't choke over that dime out of the dollar. Glory to God. A lot of people can't experience the blessing of God because they're choking over a dime out of the dollar. Amen. If you remember here at Faith and Victory Church, your tithe belongs here. Amen. And I can say that because I'm not the pastor. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can get mad at me, and I'm going to be sitting over there next week, and I'll, you, uh, you're going to be sitting in the back of my head, so it ain't going to matter. <laughs> Amen. But that dime out of every dollar belongs here in the, in the presence of the Lord to help, help the work of God go forward. Amen. Amen. And, of course, whatever the Lord, and over top of that, whatever the Lord tells you to do, do that. Amen. Because we always have projects and things that, that God is wanting us to do, and it's going to take finances to do that. Amen? Amen. But as you give, it shall be given back to you a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. You will be blessed. Amen. Amen? I've been saved a couple years now. And I can safely say that when you give unto God, he gives it back to you multiplied. Amen. 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 He just don't give you a couple more back. He give you lots more back. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, give back to you. Amen. Who likes who likes more than enough? I like I, I really like more than enough. 
I, I can't tell you how much I like more than enough. Because, see, it ain't good. It's not good when you show up at the restaurant and you just got barely enough or, or not enough. You have, to, you have to scale back your eating if you ain't got enough. You roll up and root Chris with $20 if you want to. You're not going to get the best meal. Amen? And I know I like the best meal. Amen. I, I, I like that steak to be sizzly hot coming over. Ooh, yeah. Come on, bring it here. I ain't even think about the price of it yet. Amen. I don't even like to have to think about the price of it. Man, as long as it's good and right, you know. And, and I'm sure many of you are the same way. Well, th this is how you get there, by your giving. Amen? I know. I know. Don't worry. We're going to get here. We're going to get here. This is going to be good. But the Lord wants me to touch this a little bit too. Amen? I, uh, you, I want you to be believing God with me for the Holy Ghost to steer me where I need to go. Amen. Because see, from the very first guitar strum, ting, we want Holy Ghost intervention this whole time here. Whole time. From the, from the, hallelujah, from that first hallelujah to the last, you are dismissed. Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost direction. Amen. We wanted to be Holy Ghost led the whole time. Whole time. Amen. Even in the offering. This is, this is part of, this is part of it too. Holy Ghost time. And, and you want to know how spiritual you are, you look in your wallet, look in your checkbook. You find out real quick how spiritual you are. You know, a lot of people can dance and shout, but then you check their checkbook out and their wallet, where they've been given at. Well, they can use some work. I'll just say it that way. You use some work in your spirituality. The Lord is not, you know, Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus watched them in, when they gave in the temple. Jesus sat in the temple and watched them give. You know, why was, why was, why was Jesus watching them give? He said, for out of the abundance of the treasures of your heart. You know, he said the one with two might gave more all of them. Well, guess what? He was watching, and he's watching now. He's watching right now. So I just give you an opportunity to hear God again in case he tell you to give some more. You know, ain't no pressure for me because it ain't going to me. Ain't none of your checks need to say Jeff Gill. None of your checks need to say Jeff Gill unless the Lord tell you that. You know, and I'm not telling you to, t to do that. So you do what the Lord tell you to do. You're going to be blessed in Jesus name. God bless you as you give. Amen. Go ahead and receive the offering. Gentlemen. Oh, let me no, oh, hold on. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this, this opportunity to give. We thank you, Father, as the people tithe and give, they'll be blessed. They'll have more than enough. Abundance will overtake their houses. Glory to God. And they'll see the blessing of the Lord in manifestation, even as I speak. In Jesus' name. Now you may receive the offering. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, release our children's ministry to the ministry true youth ministry children's ministry amen hallelujah as they go glory to god let's let's uh, let's extend our hands to them as they go father in the name of jesus we just thank you for our children we thank you lord that they'll be inspired and taught the word of god and that they can receive at their level glory to god and we we speak blessing over them now we thank you father that they'll never see jail Unless they're going to preach to somebody, they'll always be in the, in the kingdom of God, glory to God, loving Jesus, serving God all the days of their life. We speak this on them now. We decree it and we command it to be so in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, our children are important. Our children are very important. Glory to God. And what we do, what we do concerning them now is going to affect them for all the days of their life. And so we need to be very conscious of, you know, what, they, what they're around, what we put them in, how they're influenced. You know, I'm very particular about who I let my kids hang around over long periods of time. You know, my wife say, well, so-and-so wants, uh, wants kids to come over and, you know, do such and such. with I say, mm, who are they? Because I want to know who they are. I want to know if they know Jesus. I want to know, you know, I, you can't know everything. But, you know, when you got a good foundation, amen, you can make some good calls. Amen. You're not going to know everything, 
But if you put your trust in the Lord and his ability to steer you properly, amen, you're going to come out on the, on the right end of things. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I just seen, seen Pastor Ed stick his head through the door. I'm like, what? What? Am I seeing in the spirit? <laughs> I'm getting ready to say, well, you know, they're off, you know, having a good time and relaxing and glory to God. And they, they came on back. You know, our pastors, man, they're, they're top shelf, man. They, they, they really love us because, you know, they, they, they want to be, they want to be with us all the time. Amen. But, you know, as any good parents, as any good parents will realize, you need, you need time away. Amen. You need time to recoup. You need time to regroup. Amen. You need time away from the cheering. Amen. It's very, it's very sad when you, when you, as a parent, you invested all this, all your life in your kids and stuff, and then, you know, you are just deteriorated because you have, you've given all into them and you haven't done anything to keep yourself. Amen. And as parents, we need to, we need to do things to, to preserve ourselves, amen, so we can be around later, amen? And so that's the, spiritual things parallel natural things. And so, you know, the Lord gave me, the, gave me this illustration of, you know, uh, of Atlas, you know, with the big world, with the world on his back like this. And he's sitting there carrying the world on his back. And the Lord showed me that that was Pastor Ed carrying this ministry around on his back. And I said, I said, Lord, I said, that's got to be a heavy load. He said, it is heavy. It's very heavy. And if you're not called to it, it'll, you'll crush under the weight of it. And there are many ministers right now crushed under the weight of the ministry that they were holding. Why did that happen? Well, it goes back to what I just said. They didn't get, they didn't get a break. They didn't get a, get a chance to get away and get refreshed. You know, and then, you know, I mean, we look all through, the, all through the word of God. You know, Moses, children of Israel, they're supposed to kill you. You know, Christian folks will kill you if you let them. Amen. But, you know, it's not because you meant to. And sometimes you mean to. But nobody here. Nobody here. Nobody here. I'm not talking about anybody here. But folks will kill you. You know, because they, they, they're, they're concerned about themselves. They're concerned about therefore, and they're not concerned about anything. They're not concerned about the overall big picture of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're concerned about what's going on in my backyard, you know. And so if you've got 300 people just concerned about themselves and their folks, that's a heavy weight to carry around all the time. Amen. And so we are blessed to have pastors that love us, they care for us, and we want to reciprocate that back to them. Amen. We want to reciprocate that back to them. How do we show them that we love them? By not getting all discombobulated because they took some time off. Amen. Amen. That's how you show them that you love them. Still show up. Still pray. Still give. Still do what you're supposed to be doing when they're not here. Amen. That's how, that's how they know that you love and appreciate them because you're still willing to go on anyway. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Kind of a little segue into, I'm going to segue into what, the, what we're talking about today. We're talking about growing up spiritually. Amen. We're talking about growing up spiritually. And see, there's, there's so many sides to this mountain. I think I'm just going to try to stay up one general side of the mountain. You know, I might hit a little rabbit trail here and there, but hopefully I'll get it soon enough. Golly. Well, that's the way I'm going to fly already. Well, we're going to cover what we can cover. Because remember... The Holy Ghost is directing this. Amen. So if I get down through all of it, great. If I don't, just make sure. I just want to make sure I cover what the Lord want me to cover. Amen. Because we're not going to be talking all day. I know some of you get a little worried. Got a little, little worried look on you. <laughs> well, you know it's 12 already, brother. Yeah. No, nah, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. They taught us at Rama, you know, he who is short with it shall be asked to speak again. <laughs> amen so we're not we're not going to wear you out all in, in one service today amen glory to God we're going to give you something good that you can chew on glory to God we pray it's going to be some good tender meat glory to God 
Hallelujah. We're not going to give you a bunch of sugars and sugar and cookies and Kool-Aid and stuff. And then you can have a, have a rush for about 10, 20 minutes. And then you got to take a nap. Amen. We're going to give you some good meat that you can grow there by. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for an opportunity to share your word. We thank you, Father, that the interest of your word gives us light, gives understanding, even unto the simple. Glory to God. Father, I pray that you use my mouth to speak the words that you will have me to say. Father, I pray that you process thoughts through my mind. Glory to God. And I only want to speak as you would have me to speak, as of the oracles of God. And Father, I give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for all things that will be wrought in our midst this day. And we pray that hearts will be changed, minds will be, be stimulated and, and directed. Glory to God. And I thank you, Father, that we will not leave this place the same as the way we came. In Jesus' name. And everybody in the group with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So as I forestated, we're going to be ministering along the lines of growing up spiritually. And my text scripture is coming out of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, starting at the 11th verse. Amen? And then we'll also be looking at some other passages of scripture. But this right here is our foundational scripture. Amen? And it reads, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers for the, for, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Amen? And so that right there is our, our foundational text scripture that we're going to be drawing from. Amen? And the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me over, over a period of weeks now about how how we need to grow up spiritually. You know, people, people age. You know, age, aging comes through time. You naturally you're gonna get older. You know, if you looked at yourself in the mirror 20 years ago and you looked this looked again today, you're gonna see something different. Amen. Hair may not be quite as black. You know. Might might be shy a couple teeth, you know. Might be might you know you you might have a chest in drawers. Your chest doesn't drop down into your drawers, you know. You 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 got you used to have a six pack, now you got a keg. You know, a lot of things can happen in twenty years. Amen. So as a process of time, you're gonna get old. Amen. You you got two choices. You can get older or die. You know, these folks having these, you know, 35-year-old, 35 35-year 35 birthdays 10 times, you know, you're confusing yourself. You have deceived yourself. Amen. But the mirror is going to tell the truth on you. You know, you can tell us whatever you want, but that mirror is not lying to you. Amen. It's going to give you back exactly what you put in it. Amen. Praise God. But unfortunately, in the body of Christ, there are a lot of old babies sitting in church. The problem, I believe, is twofold. There are pastors out there who are operating outside the biblical template of local church government. There are pastors in churches who were sent. And then there were some that just went. Mm -hmm. The pastors who we find that just went are oftentimes leading very dysfunctional churches. You know, if you spend any time in it, you see how dysfunctional it is. But, you know, no real order, more of a social club than anything, no real mandate to reach the loss, or, here's another one, they operated up under another great pastor up under a house anointing. They had a, it was a, there was a house anointing that this, gentleman or lady was sitting in and of course you know 
We have a house anointing here. There's a house anointing here. Pastor Ed is a preacher and teacher of the word of God, man, like you ain't never seen. And so as, because I'm hooked up with him, I get to flow in that. I get to benefit from that. It's like your kids in your house. You know, they get to eat out of your refrigerator. You know, and my kids, they eat all the time out of my refrigerator. I have to, I have to hey, get out, close that refrigerator. What you, the same thing was in it five minutes ago. Ain't nothing changed. We went shopping. Close that refrigerator. Wearing out the light in the refrigerator. You know. And so as a child, you know, hooked up in the same household, you get to benefit from being in the house. You get to benefit from that anointing. I get to flow in Pastor Ed's anointing. Glory to God. It's good, too. Amen. Glory to God. And the mistake is, the mistake that a lot, some now pastors ran, have run into is that they thought that this was their anointing. This is what God put on them. But they were operating up on the house anointing. And then they, then they get to smelling themselves and thinking, you know, they know more than the pastor and this, that, and the other. Well, I'm going to start my own ministry. You know, I'm, I'm just as anointed. I'm just as anointed as Pastor Ed. And you, you ain't no more anointed than the man in the moon. Thinking you got something that you ain't got. And then, and then, then you drawing people unto yourself. Thinking, oh, wait, you, yeah, you sure are so much better than him. Ooh-wee, if you started a church, I would be right there with you. Oh, see now, see now, we got a problem. Number one, you lifted, he's lifted up in pride, and now the devil sends somebody to help you get even more lifted up in pride and shoot you right on out. And then once you get about 50 yards from, from that anointing, that stuff lift up off you like, where you going? Hey, hey, come back, come back, come back. Uh-uh. You don't you don't you don't got lifted up in pride, you done left. And so now you just went. And now you're about to mess some folks up. And you're gonna you instead of instead of repenting and coming back and getting back in right standing and doing what you're supposed to do, you're gonna stay on out there and forge forward anyway. Make a mess of things. I don't know how many churches out there right now up under the same thing. Under the same thing because they thought they had something they ain't have. Woo, don't shout me down because the preacher real good. Hallelujah. Mm. I told you it's going to be some meat today. Well, you're going to chew on this here. Get your bib out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You might have to spit up a little bit. It's all right. Amen. Some pastors that were sent and we back and we 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 off the ones that went, because we in a we in a we in a great place here at Faith and Victory Church. We got pastors that love us, take care of us, watch over us, watch over us like the flock of God. Amen. They, their concern and care is towards their people. Glory to God. Anything happen, boom, they right on it. I'm a living witness. Amen. Every time I call which is not that often because I know they got a lot on their plate. But when I call, they respond. Amen. And I know each one of you can say the exact same thing. They respond. Amen. They don't leave you hanging. They don't have, you know, this one, that, and the other one call you. They, they get hands on with it. Amen. And we have a blessing here in Dr. Ed and Janie Taylor. Amen. They are a blessing to us. Amen. Now, Here's what happens in some of the other churches. Y'all excuse me. I have to adjust myself. Just a scotch. All right. Some pastors that, w that were sent have gotten off the template for qualifications for church leadership. What, what do I mean? What's the template for church leadership? Turn in your Bibles. 1 Timothy, the third chapter. We're going to go over this template that God has put in place for church leaders. This is not my idea. This is what God has instituted so you can safely know whether or not your church is being governed properly. This is, this is one of the, this is, this is a key scripture. And I'm going to be reading this out of the God's Word translation. 1 Timothy 3rd chapter, 1st through the ninth verse. 
And I'm going to start off here. This is a statement that can be trusted. If anyone sets his heart on being a bishop, and of course, when we, when we use terms like bishop, deacon, it, it, can, it can also be relegated down to church leaders. Amen? If anyone sets his heart on being a bishop, he desires something excellent. A bishop must have a good reputation. He must, only, he must have only one wife at a time, be sober, use good judgment, be respectable, be hospitable, and be able to teach. He must not drink excessively or be a violent person, but he must be gentle. He must not be quarrelsome or love money. He must manage his own family well. His children should respectfully obey him. If a man doesn't know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? Now, I'm going to stop right there. See, we got a lot of folks that's holding offices and positions and stuff in the church doing different, different things, and they, they, don't, they don't meet this criteria at all. And that's why, that's why the church is all in a mess, because we've gotten away from this template that God has placed for our safety so that his house can be ran can be conducted and run appropriately. Amen? And we need to get back to that. Amen? Seeing what these, what these criteria, staying within this criteria. Now, that doesn't mean that people are not going to have issues and things that they need to work through, but if we stay close to this template, you're going to find yourself in a safe place every time. Amen? All right, so he must not be quarrelsome, or love money, he must manage his own family well. His children should respectfully obey him. If a man doesn't know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a new Christian, or he might become ag arrogant like the devil and be condemned. People who are not Christians must speak well of him. Amen? <clears throat> Deacons must also be of a good character. They must not be two-faced or addicted to alcohol. They must not use shameful ways to make money. They must have clear consciences about possessing the mystery of the Christian faith. Their wives must also be of a good character. They must not be gossips, but they must control their tempers and be trustworthy in every way. A deacon must have only one wife. Deacons must manage their children and their families well. Those deacons who serve, serve well, gain an excellent reputation and will have confidence as a result of their faith in Christ Jesus. Wow. That's why I'll, I'll say that again. Wow. How far has church rolled away from that? Where it's a, a, a social club, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's rock walls and smoke shows and stuff. It's not about the integrity anymore. It's not about this template anymore. I'll say it again. Take good notes. You will be tested on this material. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good stuff. Amen? There are no perfect churches because there are no perfect people. Every church has flaws. I'll say that again. Every church has flaws. Even the one you like to watch on Sunday morning before you come in here has flaws. There are no perfect pastors. Every pastor has flaws. God, oh Lord, God did not send you to this church to correct the pastor. I think I will. God did not send you to this church to correct the pastor. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every pastor or leader must be willing to inspect his ministry with a fine tooth comb and see if there are some areas in ministry that need some fine tuning and improvement. Every pastor should do that. What do you do when something you notice is not right or could be deemed questionable? Do you start calling your friends and family and ask them what they think? I certainly hope not. The mature child of God will take that issue into the throne room and lay the problem at the feet of Jesus. We're talking about growing up spiritually. 
Because, see, we're, we're in a day and age, we're in a time right now where the Lord is wanting to elevate us up, but there's some, there's some house cleaning that need to take place. You know, in the spring, you know, you start going through your closets and pulling out this and start throwing away that. Man, this thing is too tight. Man, it's got a hole in it. You know, we, we're doing some house cleaning today. Amen. We're sweeping up, you know, in those corners. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're getting them dust bunnies from up under the bed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We, we, we wiping off the, the ceiling fan. Glory to God. It's got an inch, inch of dirt on top of it. Man, we need to get this stuff out of here. Hallelujah. Because this is slowing. This is, this is corrupting our, our facilities. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the manure. Ma, 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 not the manure. <laughs> not the manure. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> la, la. Your mouth just get, tongue just get real thick sometimes. La, 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 la. <clears throat> the mature child of God will take that, that issue into the throne room and lay the problem at the feet of Jesus. The Lord may even have you to address the Lord may even have you to address the issue with your pastor. Ah, but listen now. But know this, you need to be very careful how you address God's man. His office, his position carries a blessing and it also carries a curse too. And how you treat him will determine which one you get. There is a blessing attached to how you honor your pastor. I know that firsthand. I do stuff for my pastor because, not because of, they're, they're such great people, because they are. They're great, wonderful people. I love them. But I also realize that there's a blessing attached to my obedience in doing what God told me to do concerning them. To treat them well. To be available. You know, if they need something... Don't find a thousand reasons why I can't do it. You know, find a thousand reasons why I can do it. Amen? And you get blessed as, as you respond to God's man, God's woman. Glory to God. Amen? <clears throat> now, let's, let's look at this. Immature baby carnal Christians have itching ears and love gossip. Sometimes these individuals can be hard to locate because they can cleverly disguise themselves with statements like, Girl, tell me what's going on so I can know how to pray. Yeah. Ain't going to be no praying going on. It's going to be a bunch of talking and backbiting. Hmm. You don't need to know what's going on in order to pray, especially those of us who know how to pray in the spirit. If you know how to pray in tongues, you don't need to know what's going on all the time. You just go, you just go, Lord, I don't understand what's going on. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I got this something that's, that's, that's scratching at me, I'm just going to attack it in the spirit. And in the spirit, you pray, pray a perfect prayer outside of your intellect, outside of your personal inclination, outside of whatever your demeanor is at the time. You ain't got to be happy. You ain't got to be sad. You can just start praying in the Holy Ghost and go straight to the problem. Yeah. Go straight through. I don't know exactly what's going on, Lord, but and you just pray until the peace comes. That's how you know when, you, when you're good, when the peace show up. The Bible says, seek the peace of God and pursue it. So whenever you're unsettled, whenever things are, are just scratching and biting at you and stuff like that, what it seems like, you just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost till, <sighs> all right, I'm good now. All right. Praise God. Just a little, thought I'd help you a little bit there. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. But there are people in your life right now that you need to distance yourself from. Not because they're bad people. Understand this. Not because they're bad people, but because they're hindering your growth in God. The devil is using them to keep you a baby. They are not growing, and they don't want you to grow up either. Have you ever noticed that when you offer words of wisdom or correction, they throw off on you like, well, who do you think you are? Huh. Why are you judging me? They get offended. They want, you, they want to take their ball and go home. Huh. Stomp off. Take their ball and go home. Y'all know what happens when you're kids and stuff. Man, you score on your friend and stuff. You, you break their ankles. Woo-hoo. I don't want to play no more. 
man, I ain't got time for you. You need to grow up. Amen. Nobody here. Amen. We're talking about the folks out in the internet world. People watching online. Nobody here is like that. Amen. Praise God. We have the love of God, the peace of God. Amen. Don't nobody get offended like that here, man. We just love everybody. I ain't calling nobody names. I ain't point you out. I ain't, I don't, I, like I said, I, I, I ain't talking about nobody in here. Praise God. Amen. Somebody say amen. Tell your face you're happy. Hallelujah. <clears throat> don't be offended. Just realize that they're still a little baby. And they're just doing what little babies do. Pray for them that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. They may, they may be a person that God is wanting you to distance yourself from. This person may be, oh, 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 wait a minute now, I'm about to hit something now. This person may be your spouse. Uh-oh. Everybody just keep looking straight ahead, keep smiling. <laughs> Won't nobody know we're talking about you. Just smile. Just continue to say amen, hallelujah. And just, you know, won't nobody know. It, that, that, that ball even landed over there in your court. One of you just keep smiling. Hey, praise, praise it, brother Jeff. Hallelujah. Yeah, it, just, just, just stay right there. Stay with me. Don't, lose, don't leave now. <clears throat> if this is the case, God is not wanting you to distance yourself from them. Pray for them. Say that with me. Pray for them. How can you distance yourself from yourself? God is not the author of confusion. God, y'all are one. You and your spouse are one. How are you going to distance yourself from your spouse? How are you going to, how, if I distance myself from my own, what's that going to be? I decide, well, leg, I'm done with you. Huh, 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 huh. It ain't going to work well. It's not going to work well. He sees you and your spouse as one. Understand this, that chronological age and spiritual age can be very different. There are lots of 60-year-olds who are still two years old spiritually. Yeah. Because they have not appropriated the word in their hearts and may become a doer of that word. Amen? Every, what's wrong with staying a baby? What's wrong with staying a spiritual baby? Every good parent wants his or her child to grow up and be a productive member of society. The Lord God is the ultimate parent and his expectations are the same as any natural parent. Number two, babies can't be trusted with certain things. No good parent would give a toddler a sharp knife and walk off and leave the child unattended. I said a good parent. I didn't say some psycho. Jason or Chucky or somebody. So many Christians are frustrated and upset with God because he's not releasing more to them. Not realizing that God in his infinite wisdom is sparing us from the destruction because he knows that our lives will be crushed under the weight of of these new responsibilities and obligations. Can God trust you to pray and keep your mouth shut? Everybody just keep looking straight ahead. <laughs> smile. Smile. Hallelujah. Preach it, brother. Don't want nobody to know you're talking about you. I, I, ain't, I ain't looking nobody in their face directly. I, I intentionally look over here and over here. I look at the lights and blind myself a little bit. I, try, I don't want you to think we're talking about you. Amen? Because we're not. Because we're talking to the folks on the internet. Amen? Nobody in here. Amen. Everybody in here got their stuff together. Hallelujah. Can God trust you to pray? For the turning away, Proverbs 1 and 32. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. See, God can't trust some of us with certain weights of responsibility because we're not ready for that yet. And you're thinking, well, yes, I am. Well, God knows you before you even knew you. So he know. Say that with me. He know. Amen. So let's trust his judgment. Amen. Well, what do we need to do in response? We need to go back to the, to the Lord and say, Lord, what do I need to do to qualify? Amen. See you. That's maturity in itself, realizing that you're not where you think you are, and you're going back to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm missing it somewhere. It's not me. It's not you. It's me. That takes maturity all by itself. And even in doing that, God can say, 
I'm glad you asked. This is what we need to work on. Amen? God is faithful to and just. Glory to God. He's a good father. Amen? He loves you. Say, he loves me. He wants the best for me. He does. You got to believe that. He wants the best for you. Amen? And what's funny to me is that, that the way that little babies think they're mature enough to handle things. They want to drive the car. You know, you know, you have, you know, you have your little baby and stuff. They, they want to get behind them. <laughs> they want to drive. They want to drive the car. They want to push the buggy at Harris Teeter. You know, they want, to, they want to do everything they see you doing. And, you know, spiritual babies are the same way. Spiritual babies got to have their own way or else there's going to be a big cry. Just like natural babies. God's allowing Satan to bring tests our way to see if we're ready to move up in our spiritual growth. Jesus, the head of the church, had to pass the test. The Bible tells me that the servant is not above his master. John 13, 16. You're not above Jesus. If Jesus had to be tested and tempted, so you're going to be tested and tempted. Not that you should be frustrated or overwhelmed by that, but you have the greater one on the inside of you. And you have the victory already guaranteed through Jesus. Amen? So welcome in the test. Embrace the test. Because you win. Amen? You win. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you stay with God, and God's definitely going to stay with you, hallelujah, you win. It may not feel like you're going to win. The circumstances may present something contrary to, to what you're thinking, but you win. You win. Tell your neighbor, say, you win. <laughs> say, you're a winner. <laughs> Hallelujah. Believe that about yourself, that you are a winner. God has the best for you. Amen. And you will pass the test. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I ain't even got halfway down on these notes here, but guess what? I'm in my spirit. I feel this is where I'm supposed to stop. And it's okay. Because a short witness shall be asked to speak again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, as a recap, we want to grow up. We want to allow God to be God in our lives, and we want to be able to point out, we want God to be able to point out those areas that we need to grow in. Amen. Because there's so much work that Faith and Victory Church needs to do in this city. Amen. And we can't do it if we got a bunch of toddlers that can't carry nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just we don't we don't want you to be all overwhelmed and, and thinking, oh, well, he called me a baby. No, I'm not calling you nothing. Like I said, we're talking to the people on the Internet. You know, nobody here. We got mature, mature Christians in here. But also recognize there are some areas that we all need to change in, that we all need to grow in, that we all need to be dealt with. Allow the Holy Spirit to deal with you. Open your heart to the Holy Spirit's leading and direction. I know you I know you as good as sliced bread. Yes, you are. But even sliced bread has got some hard edges on it. Amen. I just got that from the Holy Ghost. Even sliced bread's got a hard edge on it, too. And so you want to let the Lord cut that stuff off of you so you can be soft all the way through and not dry out like toast. Amen? Hallelujah. Every head bow, every eye close. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to minister your word, to share your word, Glory to God. We just give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And Father, if there will be one person under the sound of my voice that has heard this message and said, you know, I need to change in, in some areas. I need to allow the Lord to, to prune me and to, to correct me. Glory to God. Your word says, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. He chastens often. And Father, we don't want to, to let this moment pass that correction have come forth and we ignored it, or we, we minimized its importance in our lives. And Father, I pray every person under the sound of my voice would recognize the need to change, a need to grow, a need to develop, and to be better. And Father, if there's one person under the sound of my voice that has heard this message and say, Lord, I need to get this right. I need to repent. I need to turn from the direction that I'm going in. And I, I receive your correction. 
and I want to be corrected because you love me and want the best for me. And I don't want to miss out on that because I refuse to be corrected. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're that person sitting in here today and you say, Lord, I want to come back. I want to be corrected. I want to be, I want to be received back into the fold. Glory to God. Maybe you, maybe you were once with God and, you, and you've had some, some challenges, some difficulties, some things going on in your life, and you just, just got, got away from God, whatever the case may be. If that's you and you're in this place and you want to come back home, you want to come back to the, to the, the, the correction, the love of God, I just want you to raise your hand. We're not going to make a spectacle out of you. We're not going to, we just want to pray for you. Amen. We want you to be restored. This is, this, is, this is the love of Jesus being extended right now to each and every person. Glory to God under the sound of my voice. If that's you and you're in this place and you say, I want to, I want to, I want to come back in. I want to be restored. I want to be made, made right before the Lord. Because my days, I don't know the number of them, but Lord, you know. And whenever my time is up, I want to be with you. Whenever that time is, and the, t and the way that I fix that is right now. And every person, under the sound of my voice, if that's you, I just want you to just gently raise your hand up. Make a, be bold before the Lord. You know, because we, ain't not one person got a heaven or a hell to put you in. Glory to God. And so we want you to be bold right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You know, you were bold in other places. Glory to God. You were bold at the, at, the, at the grocery store. You were bold at the football field. You were bold everywhere else. You were bold in Harris Teeter. Let's be bold in church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that's you, raise your hand. We want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, second, my second invitation is if you have not received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you don't know how to speak in tongues. It says in Acts 2 and 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Glory to God, if that's you in this place and you, you ain't never had this experience, you don't know how to pray the perfect prayer. You're limited, glory to God. It's not that you have to, you get to. Hallelujah. Amen. Praying in the Spirit is the most wonderful operation in the Spirit. Glory to God. You have a perfect perfect uninhibited line of communication with God the Father. Hallelujah. And if you desire this experience and you want this experience, I want you to raise your hand. Glory to God. I want to pray with you. You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. You're going to have this, this endowment of power. Glory to God to, to step your game up in the spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If that's not you, if that's you and you want this, glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants you to have it. We want you to have it here at Faith and Victory Church. If you want that experience, you never had it before, you say, well, I don't know, what the, I, don't, I, I, I ain't sure. Well, that's okay, that's okay. There's a lot of things you're not sure of, glory to God. You're not sure of gravity, but you know it work. Amen? Hallelujah. You step off this tall building, you find out gravity is at work. If that's you and you want this experience, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Open your eyes, raise your head. Glory to God. Well, at this time, since our beloved pastors are back in town, we, we certainly are not going to close this service out without giving them an opportunity to come and share some words of encouragement to us. Let us, let us know how, to, how everything went. Glory to God. At this time, I want you to receive our, our lovely pastors, Dr. Ed and Jane Taylor. Glory to God. I'll see Pastor Jane. She must have stepped out already. Amen. Hallelujah. We, uh, we slid back in town this morning, and uh, it was my wife's to meet with all the BBS people, and uh, I was going to stay longer, but she said, I got to talk to him before BBS, so anyway, uh, my, my word of encouragement is, if you are helping with BBS, you need to see my wife before you leave the building today, all right, you, you have to see her because she's got some stuff for you to get you ready for next Saturday, uh, make sure that you're inviting uh, people to come to VBS, it's a one-day VBS, 10 to 4 here at the community center next Saturday, um, and if you are inviting and people say they're coming, let us know because we have to make preparation in certain areas, uh, food, snacks, um, props, different things we're doing in the VBS. We'll need to know how many kids we're going to have or an idea. You know, I mean, you know, if we've got five more than 30, that's okay. If you've got 30 more than five, that's not okay. Okay? All right? That just, that just doesn't work. All right? Um, and, and yes, we had us a great week on our, on our anniversary trip. This was 37 years this past Thursday and, um, hallelujah. And we, um, 
we, we left here and we drove up to Lexington, Virginia, then went over the next day to the homestead um, near Covington, which is built in 1766. Uh, and uh, it's a, it was a resort place. We just ate lunch there because it was three hundred dollars a night. With the eye, we'll just we'll just we'll eat lunch here. We'll go kind of walk around out like we belong here and eat lunch, and then and then we'll just go on down the road. <laughs> Hallelujah! And uh, and then after after that, we went at the Front Royal, got in, got to our hotel. Janie said, "Do you really want to stay here?" Because we got there and looked at it. What, what the in, internet picture in the p- hotel didn't look the same. And we walk in, and this guy comes up from behind the counter, and she didn't, he didn't, she didn't say, hello, how you doing? We have a reservation. She goes, is it too late to cancel? And I looked at her and went, okay, we're not staying here. <clears throat> and then um, we got another hotel, about $30 a night more, that was new, clean. We're like, and then we got to go see Mark Hankins. And uh, then we got to eat with the Hankins in the, in the past. We just met the pastor for the first time. They invited us to eat with them after church that and everything. So we got to spend time with the Hankins and the, new, the pastor of that church and get to know them. It was a, it was a good time. We got to, it, was really, it was a really sweet and precious time. And um, Brother Mark is a trip. Anyway, um, then we got up next morning, got on the Skyline Drive and started down, got to Lou Ray, went to Lou Ray Caverns, stayed at the Mimsland Inn, which was built in 1931. You know, the older hotel, really kind of cool. And, um, and then we got on the back on the Skyline Drive the next day, went to Charlottesville, then went to Montpelier, then Monticello, Jefferson, uh, Thomas Jefferson's home and, and James Madison's home, and then got back on the Blue Ridge Parkway because we had ended the Skyline Drive. Drove all the way to Peaks Vodder, and we, I wanted to stay there, but it was just so expensive. We was like... We were like, no, we're not going to make reservations there. It's just, they're just asking too much. I mean, so and it's, a, it's a park. So we got there, and I said, honey, I really would like to stay here. She said, well, okay, we'll see if we can stay here. So we walked in, went to the guy and said, would you happen to have any rooms? He said, I got one room. It's a king. It's got a handicap shot. We don't care. Right downstairs, I said, while well, he's kind of looking up and how much it is, I said, you know, do you have an anniversary special? Yeah, well, the anniversary special right off the bat was uh, $40 more, I mean, less a night than what it's seen on the Internet. And then he gets done, he goes, you know, I just gave you our best walk-in special. is another $10 off. So we were like, yeah, God loves me. We did the Peaks of Otter. Got the next day, and we drove 200 miles on the parkway. I was down to Blowing Rock. Um, and, you know, just we, we ate there and went down. And we, then we spent a couple of days in our cabin, uh, the family cabin that her parents met, built over Buck Mountain and got up this morning and came home. And uh, we, we, because she wanted to be, get here and see everybody and get all that stuff in their hand. I'm like, honey, we'll take it to their house. I want to get to them. Okay. So we had a wonderful week. We, uh, you know, we're, we're thankful for that. We had the people in this ministry that we can, we can entrust, you know, to minister while we're out of town. And, uh, I, you know, the, the Je- uh, Kat was able to minister. Jeff, Bill ministered a couple of weeks ago on Wednesday night. Um, we're just, we're thankful God has got good people here that we don't, we don't have to freak out when we're leaving town or, or call somebody up and say, can you come over to my church and so fill me, fill the pulpit while I'm gone? You know, we're, we're, we're good. we got people in here that we can, we can trust to take care of things. So we're, uh, we're glad. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So uh, we sure love y'all. And um, we're glad that we're here, but I'm not pastoring today. I'm just here. I came in so she could hand that stuff out. Now, if you need something, we'll help you. All right? Jeff did a good job. I know Cap did a good job. We heard a little, heard a little bit of that. And his family all got on there and told him how great he was doing. We saw all that going through the feed while we're watching it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But we're going to need for you to help us break it down and uh, make sure you see Janie. And don't forget, Wednesday night we'll continue on our series on um, priorities of life. And then next Sunday we're going to pick back up from last Sunday on the love of God. Amen. And I've got some, I got, got get, spent some extra time on some stuff this week. I got some new insight on some stuff on, on love. And uh, praise the Lord. I'm excited about it. And I'm not going to even give you a hint this morning. All right? Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we sure love you. Everybody stand up. Good to see all of those that are visiting this morning. I, I, I knew Jeff's going to pull in some, some folk to come see him preach. He always does. Hallelujah. And we're glad we're, oh, <clears throat> and don't let me give credit to the wrong person. <laughs> Melanie got him here. All right. <laughs> and she don't mind letting me know. So she, all right. All right. Hallelujah. We sure love all of y'all. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. We'll see you Wednesday night. Don't for, oh, and next Sunday, Fifth Sunday Fellowship. Next Saturday is the, uh, 
is the VBS. Sunday is the Park Fellowship at Gibson Park. You make sure you see the uh, sign-up sheet, people. It's out in the foyer on the table. Just what you're going to bring? <clears throat> you already covered that, didn't you? All right. Make sure you're there. We got, we got the dogs. We got the burgers. You bring everything else. We're going to meet at Gibson Park after church. Also, real quick, if you live too far away to go home and change clothes, just bring it. You can go right over there. There's like a locker room, bathrooms over here. You can go right over there and change clothes before you leave the building. All right? You won't have to go home. All right? You can do it right here at the, at, at the facility because the, the restrooms over here are locker rooms too, so they got places you can change clothes. So come on in and do that. Love you. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night, and help us break it down. God bless. Bye.